Oh, you're here. August waiting for you inside. Well, go on then. So Dravosht is still standing. For now at least. If you can swing a hammer. I have some things for sale. Certainly. Here you are. Clive! You're here! And the Akashic? Mostly off to the north still. But I spoke to Doris' scouts and it turns out things are worse than I thought. There's swarms of them out there. Told old Snotty to be ready to seal the north gate. That should buy us some time if we need it. Enough for the villagers to barricade themselves inside their homes at least. Well done. Welcome back, Sid. I'd never have guessed, you know. Not if August hadn't let slip. Who'd have thought that the savior of Dravosht would turn out to be the realm's most infamous outlaw? Keen to help us out again? I am. Thought you could sneak off without me, did you? Blackthorn. Oh, what are you doing here? One of the scouts couldn't keep his voice down. Unlike my best mate who didn't think I deserved to know. Zoldan, how long's it been? Long enough for us two to turn into a pair of old codgers, I see. Then your idea of an apology? Prick. Don't listen to him. You only did what you thought was best. For the village and that. I did, yeah. But that ain't the whole of it. Vulcan, our master, didn't leave the chieftain to the two of us. He left it to me. The best blacksmith in Dravosht, barring himself, of course. Bloody stupid tradition, in my opinion. If someone's got talent, you should let them practice their craft, not ask them to settle petty feuds and barter for grain. Our master wasted half his life that way. I wasn't about to let that happen to me. So you're wasting half of mine instead? You're what Dravos needed. Under me and my precious ideals, this place wouldn't have lasted a year. So I left to devote myself to the work and spare you lot the consequences. I may be a selfish prick, but I only did what I felt I had to. What you had to do was your duty! Even if it meant we all starved? Enough. This is no time for bickering. You can finish beating each other up once Dravosht is safe. Fine. I've said my piece anyway. Yeah. So have I. Sorry, Clive. I shouldn't have stuck my nose in. We're short enough on time as it is. Still, give us a mo, would you? I need to get my head straight before any of them Akashic try to bite it off. You, uh, ready for the off, then? We can't afford to waste any more time. Right you are. Might be worth having one last word with the scouts, though. Don't want any nasty surprises, do we? Oh, and... Blackford. You and Zoltan might be better off staying inside the... Akashic on the move! How close are they? Within sight of the walls. And there are more coming up from the mines. <sighs> What was I saying about nasty surprises? They'll wash right over us if we stay out in the open. We're pulling back behind the gates. Good idea. Get yourselves inside, but keep your weapons handy. Understood. I'm prepared to fight if I have to. Well, let's hope you don't. That's our job. Once the scouts are inside, order your men to barricade the gates. No heroic last stands, you hear me? No fighting at all if you can help it. August's right. I've seen what Akashic beasts can do to armor. The people here are tough and willing, but they ain't equipped to face what's coming. I'm going out there. Start work on the gate as soon as I've left. I'll give you as much time as I can. And if they kill you? You evacuate. But it won't come to that. I promise. <laughs> You'd better be right. Take good care of Dravosh till I get back. Leave it to me. And... Give those things what for, yeah?
Oh, the question is... Did I miss any? Man alive! You stood in one piece! I slew as many as I could. <laughs> as many as I could, he says. The old bleeding lot more like it. Well, almost. Only almost. Yeah, one or two did try to sneak over the wall. But we got the bastards, don't you worry. Good. Oh, you do know. More will come in time. In time, yeah. But we can think about them later. Let's get you back inside. Sid! <laughs> You're even more fearsome than your reputation. <laughs> Enough to give those Akashic monsters nightmares. I almost felt sorry for the wretched things. But mostly, I felt grateful. Dravost won't forget what you did today. I'm afraid I've only delayed the inevitable. There's no getting rid of that ether flood. Meaning that any living thing which stumbles into those mines will end up clawing at your walls again. And that's if the flood don't spread. If it does, well, I hate to say it, but the village's days are numbered. That may be, but we're staying just the same. With the ether flood springing up all over, it's no less safe than anywhere, and more importantly, it's our home. We'll fortify the gates to the north, and I'll see that they're guarded day and night. All right. Then we'll give you a hand shoring up those defenses. As for you, Blackthorn, that's twice you've turned up when Dravosh needed you. So... Thanks. I shouldn't have stayed away so long. And I shouldn't have left without talking it over with you first. <laughs> Too bloody right you shouldn't. Though I doubt I'd have listened. I always... envied you. How you made everything look so easy when, for me, it was anything but. You leaving gave me the perfect excuse to hate you. And from that day on, I never once stopped to wonder what it would have been like if you'd stayed. But what you said earlier... It was true. You'd have been the death of this place. Finally. Something we can agree on. I hope you see the sense of it eventually. You kept this place alive. Alive, perhaps. Wealthy even, but... Dravoj isn't what it once was. Our work used to be the pride of Dalmechia. Now, we churn out the same rubbish day after day because it's easy and turns a profit. It's not about the craft anymore. <laughs> I wouldn't send my sons to war wearing the shit most of our smiths are making. I've kept working, honing my skills, trying to lead by example, but no one sees the point. The average castle apprentice has as much passion for the craft as our current lot. Come back to us, Blackthorn. Remind Dravosht what a true master blacksmith looks like. <laughs> I'll even man those bellows of yours if it means we can work at the same forge again. That's a kind offer. Kinder than I deserve. And I wish I could accept, but I'm needed elsewhere. There's people who trust their lives to my steel, and I dare not let them down. <sighs> Fair enough. But that doesn't mean I couldn't visit from time to time. Let's see if we can't rekindle this town's passion for the craft, shall we? I'd like that. Just be sure to tell Snotty to let me in the next time I come calling, yeah? <laughs> Knowing him, he'd let you in anyway. Blackthorn. The Master Smith turned outlaw, back in my good graces. I never thought I'd see the day. I'd say that went pretty well, wouldn't you? Even better than I'd hoped. Sid, I've got something for you.
And this is? A token of our lasting gratitude. But I'm of a mind to make you a far grander gift. Designs for a certain sword have been passed down from chief to chief for generations. Now hold on, Sultan. There's a reason no one's made that blade in centuries. There's not been a craftsman equal to the task. I'll admit your cinders make impressive steel, and I've learned to own an edge Odin will be proud of. But the engravings on that thing are enough to make a jeweler cry. And they're not just for show, either. Have you forgotten what brought you back to Dravorst in the first place? Hmm? A certain ring? I knew I'd never surpass you with a hammer and tongs. So I turned my hand to a different kind of metalwork. Between the two of us. I'd say we're the equal of any master craftsman ever to have graced a forge. <laughs> You know what? I think you might be right. Clive, you wouldn't mind if Sultan came back to the Idaway, would you? <laughs> He's more than welcome. As long as he can keep our secret. Right. Sultan, get your tools. We've got a legend to forge. With a little help from Blackthorn, I don't see why we can't restore Dravosh to its former glory. <laughs> Barring ether floods, that is. I'll tell you what, Clive. If we pull this off, it will ruin every other sword you've ever held. I'll get him back to the Eidaway. Don't you worry about that. Come back. Don't tell me we've run out of Ah, the man himself. We were just about to make a start on that sword, I promised you. It's funny, but none of this would have been possible without your help. You remember Camille? We'll be using his level work for the grip. The steel, meanwhile, will be tempered in a fire, burning the cinders you charmed out of old Zoltan here. And that wet stone from the Outer Isles? That'll be what gives the blade its edge. And the final flourish will be my talented colleagues engraving. A team effort led by the greatest blacksmith alive. <laughs> now, now, save that talk to the thing's finished, yeah? Right. I'm ready if you are. To the bellows it is, then. Well, bugger me. <laughs> we actually did it. The sword to end all swords. Ragnarok. It's quite something. I uh, trust you'll take good care of it. Thank you. Both of you. So, does this make you pair the greatest craftsman alive then? <laughs> this? <laughs> nah. This was just following the footsteps of the greats of old. It'll take more than that to earn us our place in history. But we're up for the challenge. Here. A list of materials. Zoltan and I got talking on the long road back from Dravoist. We reckon with those items there, we could craft something even better than the Ragnarok. Something worthy of a legendary outlaw like yourself. That's a weapon I'd like to see. You leave this list with me. I was hoping you'd say that. One legend at a time, eh, lads? Before you start on the next, who fancies raising a cup to friendship reforged? Good idea. No more drinking to forget my past. It's about time I had something to celebrate. <laughs> then tap the kegs! Vulcan's boys are on their way!
Trouble with your gear, or... Yeah. The weight of all that shit. Zolta and would ever speak again, let alone work together. And if it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't. You've been a good friend of me, Clive. The best. So, will it be? run out of papio nuts and all. Clive. Go on, then. It'd better all be here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. to deal with the 
these ones first. a customer who knows what he wants. Why? <sighs> Come on. Run like the wind.
Come on. Faster. all of them. A wine can uncross his toes now. Dora should be somewhere nearby. Assuming she's still here. The guardians of the flame were true friends to the rest. The world seems to be changing so fast lately I can hardly keep up. But what I do know is that there's more bad news than good. You can tell that just by looking at people's faces. I've got greens of all shapes and sizes. Colors Looking too. for shelter, are you? Mostly green, though. Sorry. Just because the heavens have gone to wreck them, now, let's get this stall set out. It doesn't still hurt, does it? Oh, a thousand Akashic jaws. It's been a pleasure, Doris. Just like old times. I'll give your offer some thought, my lady. How goes the investigation? Sid, what brings you to Martha's Rest? You. I heard you were out here on your own, tracking our slaver. I trust you're being careful. Of course. And it had to be me. The bearers from the Dragon's Airy confirmed a long-held suspicion of mine that the slaver we've been tracking is an old acquaintance. She's no fool. If we'd come in force, she would have spotted us straight away, and then vanished without a trace. That was her just now, wasn't it? So... Was it a fruitful reunion? I'd say so. She tried to recruit me. Seems her time in Rosaria is coming to an end. She's abducted bearers from across the region and is looking to smuggle them back into Sambrek. After her brush with those beastmen on the road to Northreach, she hired herself an Imperial escort, which she wants me to join. She's dangerous, Sid, but I think I can stop her. Then I'm going with you. I'll take care of the escort. You can see the bearers to safety. Where are they? The Baum Arches, soon to break camp. You go on ahead. I'll follow once I've sent word back to the hideaway. <sighs> she asked me to join her at the Baum Arches. 
It's a wonder she still trusts me after everything that happened. Flavor, I wonder. We've waited long enough. She's not coming. <laughs> Ready the bearers. We're leaving. Back to civilization, is it, Mom? With all haste, lest any of you lackwits start talking like these feckless bumpkins. I presume your men are ready. We've suffered too many delays as it is. Any more, and I'll be docking your pay. Yes, Mom. Oh, but before you go, it appears we have company. Kill him. You're welcome to try. <sighs> <sighs> So much for your escort. <laughs> You'll forgive me for not avenging my men. I'm not the swordswoman I used to be. I surrender. Do with me as you wish, Sid the Outlaw. Sid! Ah, Doris. I take it you're not here to rescue me from our brooding renegade? You know, I always wondered where you'd vanished to. But casting your lot with this criminal of all people. Better fighting for a cause than killing for coin. I'm sorry, Sid. I should have told you sooner. This woman, my former master, once trained bearer children to be weapons in service of the highest bidder. She raised me like a daughter. And I did terrible things to earn her favor. It wasn't all terrible, surely. We had our fun, too. You were always so eager to learn, and had such 
clever hands. All my other children took either to the blade or to the books. Always either or. But you proved yourself a master of both. That's why I kept you for my own. How about it, my little dagger? Care to swear that blade to me again? I never swore my blade to you, nor will I ever. I fight for a higher cause, to liberate the bearers of this world. Farewell, master. Thank you for making me the weapon I am. You always were a righteous child. Perhaps that's the reason I loved you so. What do you want to do with her? I am not the killer she wanted me to be. Not anymore. And she no longer has friends in high places. The dame does, though. Her connections at the Imperial Court will see that justice is done. All right. If you're certain. I am. And thank you. For everything. Now, I better let these bearers know that they're safe. And I should head back to the hideaway and put Cole's mind at ease. Welcome back, Sid. Doris's message just arrived. I hear you saved more bearers from being smuggled across the border. With any luck, they'll be joining us in the hideaway shortly. Oh, and your letter. You don't need to worry about Doris anymore. I'd been hoping as much. She mentioned one or two things in her report. So the slaver we'd been chasing all these months was her former master. <laughs> Wish I'd known. She's been arrested, by the way, over in Sambrek. Went quietly, or... So we're told. And she won't be getting off lightly. The Empire may have no love for bearers, but it's none too fond of black market traders either. Can't have been easy for Doris. I'm sure it wasn't. But don't worry. She'll be all right. I hope so. Suppose you should know, eh? You had quite the past yourself before you came here, or so I understand. Anyway, thanks again, Sid. The curse breakers would be lost without Doris. And you, of course. Keep up the good work, Cole. I suppose you've got quite the tale to tell. I'll let you get some nice warm stew in you first, before I go bothering you for the details. Back at all. I heard Odin. You need anything, you just ask. We might not have your resources, but resources. Oh, I wasn't expecting you back, so. All yours. Best of luck out there, Sid. How was she? The Enterprise, I mean. Ah, Sid! Wasn't expecting you back so soon. So, is it good news or bad? Good, thankfully. Here. Ah, oh, that's brilliant! Thanks a blimmin' million! I'll fit into the smelter right away!
May I present to you... The Telemon Furnace! In bad is she? She's a beauty. You saved my beacon again, Sid! And I ain't about to let your good deed go unrewarded! It's... it's fine, really. My bag's, uh, flexible enough already. Oh, don't say that. I'm sure I can make a few improvements to it yet. You could just buy me a bigger... How about that clasp? Looks a bit stiff. Reckon you could loosen it up and make some more room? And I reckon I know how. With a new alloy we've been working on, the Telemon Furnace was just what we needed to perfect it. It's a metal, see? So it's lovely and strong, but it's also, well, stretchy, if you can believe it. Stretchy metal. <laughs> well, if you insist. That is the spirit. You'll love it, I promise. So, what do you reckon? <laughs> it's actually quite ingenious. Thank you, Owain. Shh, don't mention it. You earned it. And I wanted to get some practice in using that metal anyway. Reckon we'll have all kinds of uses for it around the hideaway. Can't think of any right now, but that's our job, isn't it? Dreaming up new ways to make life easier around here. Maybe even out there, too. One day, the whole world's gonna know about the inventions you've helped us put together. That bag of yours will be the first of many. You mark my words. They'll hardly believe their eyes, I'm sure. Right then, let's get back to work. These world-changing inventions ain't gonna invent themselves. <laughs>